serenity within. Hey guys, it's Gab from the music class. Um, I'm not in the uh, Radio Katipunan studio today. Um, just want to make that clear. If this video seems a little um, out of place, I'm actually making myself available for a uh, little family emergency. Uh, but anyway, um, the uh, our producer, uh, Justin, uh, the guy who's probably handling this video right now, I. Um, suggested that maybe I can try something uh, for emergencies like these and actually have something planned for um, I was gonna use it for today's episode and the coming weeks if I didn't have any guests and I wanted to introduce you guys to uh, Rick Beato Rick Beato um, R-I-C-K-B-E-A-T-O um, he's a music teacher he's a producer and he's really good. He has a YouTube uh, channel and a playlist that is basically a breakdown of all the hits um, from some of the more popular bands and some other not so mainstream bands. Um, and he does a really great job of trying to, I guess, not just break it down, but, but actually let you see through the ears and eyes of the musicians and um, I have a few lined up here that I want to share with you guys and um, the first one is going to be from your dad's favorite band and mine, Toto. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato and today is Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, Episode 9. The band we're talking about today is Toto and the song is Rosanna. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing that we're going to talk about that makes this song great is what the song enters with, and that's the drums. It starts with this. That is Jeff Beccaro playing. This drum part is one of the most famous drum parts ever in a rock tune. This is a variation on the halftime Purdy shuffle. According to Jeff Picaro, it's based on three different grooves. Home at Last, that's from Steely Dan Asia, it's Bernard Purdy part. And then Babylon Sisters, that's from Steely Dan Gaucho. And Fool in the Rain, John Bonham's shuffle beat from that, combined with a Bo Diddley kick and snare part. Check that out. So the Bo Diddley part is there. Dun, 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 snare, kick, kick, kick kick, snare. So the drums start the song and then the bass enters on the note G. Check it out.
Here's the bass by itself. Now let's hear it with the guitar. So the guitar adds that extra little thing at the end. Da da da. Listen to the guitar by itself. Now, if we bring in the keyboards, the piano, along with it, sounds like this. Here's the piano by itself. So the fast da da when he goes to G sus four da da G da da the G sus two creates that tension and release that really gives it the intro and the verse a mood. I also want to talk about the percussion starting at the beginning. We have Lenny Castro on the uh, congas and percussion. Check it out. There's a lot of percussion in the tune. Here's the percussion. That's the conga part. We next have the vocals enter in the verse with Steve Lukather singing. Check it out. All I want to do when I wake up in the morning is see your eyes. Rosanna, Rosanna, I never thought that a girl like you could ever care for me. Rosanna. Okay, so that's obviously double tracked all the way through. And Lukather has a really interesting voice. I love the sound of his voice. And it contrasts with Bobby Kimball, who sings all the high parts in the tune, because he enters next on the B part of the verse, right here. All I want to do in the middle of the evening is hold you tight. Rosanna, Rosanna, I didn't know you were looking for more than I could ever be. You'll notice that that voice has a chorus on it, or what I call a detune. It's, it's to thicken the voice. And it's really de a lot. You can tell when he says Rosanna. Listen to the S. Rosanna, Rosanna. So we move from G major down to F major, and the organ enters with the piano. Listen. <laughs> this does a similar figure, and the organ adds that kind of tension with that, that glue holding that, that uh, drone through there. Listen. Guitar hits a power chord and then comes back in, but with heavier. Now the drums and bass stay the same through that section. The bass changes down to F, but it still plays the same rhythm. Then we have this really layered pre-chorus vocal. That Not quite a year since she went away, Rosanna again. Now she's gone and I have to stay. This is very heavily layered. There's no Pro Tools going on. This is all done on tape way before Pro Tools super in tune professional studio musician singing right there straight quarter note kick drum and you have the finger snaps so that's kind of a groove change there here's the bass goes right along with the kick drum Now the guitars have a whammy bar, so Luca there's playing a clean guitar thing, really beautiful, but check out the vibrato he does. The vibrato is right in time. He's using the whammy bar. Here it is with the keyboard. So the next thing we have is the lead in into the chorus. It's that horn riff that goes along with the guitar. So that is a five part horn section. That's two saxophones, two trumpets, and one trombone. The trombonist is James Pankow, who is the trombonist from Chicago. Then you have one of the trumpet players is Jerry Hay, who's on a million records. And you have Tom Scott, who's a really famous saxophone player that's on a million records. Uh, is one of the saxophonists. So this is a great, great, really fat horn arrangement. Not a three-horn part, a five-horn part. So that doubling of the saxes, doubling of the trumpets, 
the trombone to fill in on the low end. And it makes it really blend well with the heaviness of the guitars there. You, I don't think you could really do it like you could with the Stones on XL Main Street that has a three-part horn section. Those five horns really fill it out and make it sound fat. So then we have the chorus vocal, which is another standout. It's really heavily layered, and there's some great harmonies. Check it out. Meet you all the way, Rosanna, yeah. Meet you all the way. That's totally pro singing. Let's listen to the guitars and the keyboards played in the chorus. They play right in unison. Here's the guitar. Before I forget, I want to talk about the drum fill that leads into the chorus, because it's amazing. Check it out. It goes right with that guitar and horn part. Listen. And then you have the guitar part, which does this fall off during that. Listen. When the chorus enters, the bass changes into a slap bass part. One thing I want you to notice is how the drums, the kick drum pattern, matches the vocals. Check it out in the chorus. So let's check out the ending of the chorus leading back into the second verse. Really cool, you have the horns doing this really nice swell. Remember we've talked about swells before? They kind of suck you back into a section, listen. So the second verse is pretty similar. The only change here is that we have, in the Steve Lugather part, we have some harmonies, listen. I can see your face still shining through the window on the other side. Rosanna, Rosanna. I didn't know that a girl like you could make me feel so sad. Then Bobby Kimball comes in the second half. Great. I never thought that losing you could ever hurt so bad. Then we're back to that same down pre chorus part. And then we do the great drum fill into the second chorus, so check it out. That, listen to that fill, it's amazing. Love the panning of the toms. So the second chorus is almost identical to the first chorus, so let's move on to the solo section. We have that same kind of swell in the horns, listen to the drum fill. Incredible feel on those Tom fills, just amazing. Another thing that makes this song great are the solos. There are a number of, there's some synth solos, there's a piano solo, and then there's the guitar solos. There's two guitar solos. These guitar solos are some of the most famous solos of the 80s and really ever in, in, a, in a tune that was a huge pop tune like this. Steve Lukather is just a quintessential player, soloist, in addition to being an amazing singer and rhythm guitar player. I mean, he is just an all-around great studio musician. Let's check out the synth solo that starts out here. I'm going to play the synths along with the piano. <laughs> Okay, let's check out the guitar solo. It goes like this. Okay, so he's got a chorus on it with a little bit of a short room reverb. Check it out, solo it here. He leads into it with a power chord.
So there's a couple interesting things about the solo. So he starts up. Right there, that bend and then the pinky hammer on. And then the cool run. Then he goes. He does another pinky hammer on at the top, but this run in the middle of it is great. You can actually slide into it. So I like to play that lick here. So it's it's Another thing that makes a guitar solo sound so good is actually what's going on behind it. So when you're hearing the organ and the piano playing between that sus4 to major to sus2. When he bends up, ba ba, you're hearing that sus4 and third grinding together, which gives it that dissonance that you want to hear. Right. It just makes the guitar solo sound even more intense. Okay, let's go over some of the licks in the end solo. I can't play the whole solo because I don't have a whammy bar, but I can show you some of the key licks in it. That's just a straight blues lick up here. So it's like... Then the next lick... is a unison bend, right? Here he's going... Then this next lick... Simply... Standard blues thing. So this next lick is really cool. It's got some minor third bends in it from the pentatonic scale. It's tricky to get up to that minor third bend. You gotta really pull that string hard. And then is the cool lick. Right here. Now let me solo it. It goes. The first lick, and then there's a break. That's the first lick. Then it goes. So that's all, and then it goes right to this, after the break, it goes to the pull up. So check it out again. We have that, um, which is a real Lukather kind of thing. The rest of the solo gets into whammy bar territory, and since I don't have a whammy bar on my guitar, I'm not even going to play it. There's also a really cool honky-tonk kind of piano solo. This is really the good old days when you had multiple guitar solos, multiple keyboard solos in a song. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Thanks for watching. So yeah, that was a lot. Um, his his channel 
and the breakdown of Rosanna is really in depth but some of the key takeaways there is he really knows what he's talking about you can you can tell um, he introduces you to um, engineering and production techniques that you wouldn't think about normally I guess if you're not familiar with them and kind of shows you how to apply them in the whole storytelling of um, the song um, he's really good in um, highlighting the different effects and uses of the instruments as sort of tools to paint the entire picture of the song and even using um, uh, the different parts to kind of highlight the different parts of the story of the song and um, that's it for Rosanna um, hope you liked it and we'll take a short break and we'll be back
Radyo Katipunan, 87.9 FM. The Music Class. Join us in an afternoon of elegant and exquisite music. Listen to the heartwarming performances and spirit-uplifting numbers. Join The Music Class and learn music in an excitingly new way. The Music Class. Let the music class begin. Hey guys, welcome back to uh, the music class. Um, I'm out of the classroom right now. Um, once again, keeping myself available for something uh, at home. I need to do at home. Um, anyway, we're uh, doing a uh, YouTube uh, video review, reaction kind of episode. And uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while because this channel is really amazing. It's from uh, this guy called Rick Beato. Some of you might know him. He's a music teacher, producer, um, engineer, all-around great musician. Um, he really, he really does a great, great job of you know just telling you how it is in a song, and that, that's kind of vague. What do you mean, Gab? Um, basically. He's, um, oh, there's that word again, basically. That's so Athenian. Um, he, um, he goes ahead and um, shows you, like, all the different parts of the song, what makes it great. That's actually the, the title of the playlist that he has, um, what, what makes the song great. And he breaks down all the classics or some other not-so-known songs. And he gives you... Um, a little breakdown of the musicality behind it, the theory, the technique, the engineering, the production, um, everything. Um, and um, what what I've always espoused when when I've I was I take I took over the show was that uh, music um, theory is a tool that we can use in the storytelling of the song. So um, even when I was with guests before. It's always I always kind of try to tether it back to um, how we can use all these different techniques that we have in the studio on our instruments in the way we write songs to really um, uh, encompass like a greater idea which is the song itself um, and I think that's the beauty of the art form um, there's a lot of technicalities behind it um, you can get really deep into it it's like it's just like anything that's worth learning. Um, there are a lot of layers, and Rick Beato um, is one of the guys that I think is really helpful if you wanna go a little deeper um, into songwriting, into your musicianship as a whole. And the next song that he has um, breaking down for us is from the Police. Um, Sting was supposed to play here, but his tour got canceled, so I'm kind of sad but anyway um this next song is called everything she does is magic and it's actually one of my favorite favorite episodes from um what makes the song great because um at the start um he says something about the playback speed of the track sped up that's why it's so hard to i guess put in tune um, for lack of a better term, you'll, you'll find out what I'm talking about later. But also, um, he, um, Sting being a bassist and as a musician as a whole, um, just incorporates so many different things here that, um, doesn't, it doesn't sound like an exercise. It sounds like it's p part of the song. And it's really amazing to me how, um, these little things add up to just, a really great song um, there's the calypso beat on a uh, world world type kind of beat on the drums and the percussions there's a bass line that's there's how it resolves there's how it becomes a, a more standard progression everything it's just a really really great song and Rick Beato just an just does an awesome job in guiding you through like listening in a little deeper to it so I uh, hope you enjoy this one, and then we'll have one more after.
Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today's episode of Everything Music is called What Makes This Song Great, Episode 2. The song we'll be looking at today is from The Police's 1983 record, Ghost in the Machine, and it's called Every Little Thing She Does is Magic. Let's get started. Okay, this song is really interesting on many levels. The first thing is that it's not tuned to standard tuning. So anybody that's ever tried to figure this out realizes that it's in between G and A flat, literally 50 cents sharp. What I think they did is that they sped the tape up to get the tempo a little bit faster. It probably didn't feel right at the tempo. Sped the tape up and said, that sounds great. It also makes the tune have a really unique sound. Most people would not realize it if they didn't have perfect pitch, but it does have a unique sound that you can't really identify. But that, I think, is because of this. The other thing is that this is one of the only songs I can think of that has a Lydian bass line in the verse. Either in the verse or the chorus, I don't know any songs that really have a Lydian bass line that is this literal. So it begins on G, or G in between G and A flat, and it comes right up the scale. G, A, B, C sharp. And that's the verse. Okay, it literally walks up one, two, three, sharp, four. Let's take a listen to the, to the intro. And okay, so the bass. Here's Sting's bass. He's playing a very compressed, fretless bass. One, two, three sharp four okay they also have a little hi-hat thing that i really want to talk about here at the beginning what you notice when you hear this hi-hat is that there's a delay on the hi-hat there's actually delay on the drums in the verses there's a delay on the hi-hat so you can hear it right here so if i solo the drums You can hear that little echo on the drums. Now the guitars walk right up in the same way. It's a guitar with an after swell. Walks right up Lydian scale. And then, my favorite part, the keyboard part. Okay, the keyboard part is really two different phrases. So it starts out... And then... First time it goes, okay. The second time through the phrase, it repeats the same thing, but the ending of the phrase is a little different. Right here. So check it out. The high one. Let's talk about the melody now. So the range of the melody is basically from A above middle C up to F sharp, the range of a six. And it starts out here. B and, and I know this is a quarter step, so it's kind of confusing the ear, but uh, A, B to D. And it goes D to C sharp, C sharp, D, F sharp, in that range of a six. So from and it uses a G Lydian scale or the G Lydian mode to go along with the chord progression. You notice that the melody bounces around between the fifth and the sharp four, right? Up to the major seventh if you, of that Lydian mode, the G Lydian mode. But the first phrase, in my heart, ends on the A. And it makes a nice, sixth interval with that sharp four there, which is why it's a great resting note. The 
And of course that ends up on the F sharp, which is a great note because it works with the chord progression that happens right here in the pre-chorus. So this pre-chorus is really interesting because it really sets up the feel of the next section of the chorus. It, it goes from this slow moving, really moody, ethereal Lydian sound of the verse, and then it turns into a calypso tune, essentially. D, G, A, D, listen to the bass part on it. Listen to it with the keys. With the keys in the build up. Then. Okay, so let's talk about the chorus here. This is a classic technique where you have a break and you allow the chorus to come in unaccompanied. Okay, so you hit the, they hit the break here, the whole band. And on thing, the whole band comes in. It really gives, when the, when the beginning of the hook starts on a break and then you power into the chorus, when you're all hitting together on an important word of the chorus, it gives it a lot of... So every time, every every downbeat there has an important word and the lyric lands right on the downbeats. Let's talk about what the guitar does in the chorus. So the guitar then goes to this reggae, what we call a skank rhythm here. So, sounds like he has an Ottawa on it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The skank happens in reggae on two and four. Okay, as we just saw in the guitar part, the chorus is simply going from A to D or five to one. Check it out. A, D, or five, one, five, flat six, B flat. This is one of the most unique chord changes here. This is what makes Sting a genius as a writer. So you're hearing this, and the last time to the flat six. Once it goes to the flat six, check out what the keyboard does. Okay, so the keyboard goes from B flat major, and then it drops down to F major. I'm doing like F add nine over A, but the bass is playing F, so it's playing the root of the chord. Then it goes down to, and then it walks back into the G Lydian part. This is really unusual. So flat six, then to, so you're going B flat to F major over A, then you start the Lydian walk up. So there's a complete change of mode there. Back in the verse. And that note D, on, on, is works perfectly over all those chords. I mean, it's incredibly ingenious. So let's listen. Then we go into the second verse and listen how the keyboard does its little turnaround here. Interesting, there's that little out of tune note that Sting sings on Matt here. Listen. First Matt. He drifts flat there, and it really gives it a unique sound. I think anybody 
that uh, that knows the song notices that if you're a musician, but it's really first met. It's cool. Again, if I'd solo the keyboards and the guitar, check it out. So the keyboards have gone into a high register. And the guitar is simply doing a pattern like that. If you listen to the verse part, right, the guitar. And the delay goes through there. Then back to the skank. So the bridge actually does something unusual again. It goes to the flat six chord like it does in the interlude between the first chorus and the second verse. The bass is going between B flat and F, but check this out. Listen to what the keyboard does here. It's going between G and A. So it's going between G and A with this pattern. So it goes. And then it's coming down this A aeolian or A natural minor sound there. So it's going from Check it out. Then it moves into a new pattern that goes between uh, F, G, D, F, G, C, G. Check it out. I resolve to call her up. So the build in the last chorus goes between B flat and C. Check out the guitar part. So it's going... Uh, going between those two chords, right? And then it rises here. And the guitar... Then, then you have that filter sweep in the synthesizer and they go up into D to set up the last chorus. And then we have the EOs. Then the chorus goes back to B flat at the end, but it changes again. Check it out. Brings in this little square wave synth. Major, B flat, and G minor. It goes to the flat six chord, B flat, but check it out. F, G minor, A minor, B flat, and then F, C, D major, modulation, then B flat, F, G minor, A minor, B flat, F, C, D. You can hear the key change. G minor, A minor, B flat. Bar here with a harmony on it. And we have that little sequencer key, uh, 
keyboard sequencer part. And then... The chorus ad-lib there, which is really powerful. Walk up, and then... And then one of the most unusual things. Is that it goes back to the Lydian bass line. This is one of the few instances that I can think of that radio stations, when the tune came out, would always play the tune to the end of the fade because there's new melodic material coming in even on the at the very end of the fade that beautiful uh recap of the verse melody with a different melody That's right at the bottom of the fade you hear that, and it's super powerful. I, I, know, I remember when I first heard it, I would always turn up the car stereo when that happened, when it got to the end of that fade. Everybody would do that. And nowadays you think of it, radio stations would always would talk over those things, but that was really just another part of the tune. It's, it's a reiteration of the verse with a completely new melody right at the bottom of the fade. Really incredible thing. There's a few production elements I want to talk about in here. One of them is the drum part. The space that Stuart Copeland leaves in his kick drum pattern in the chorus. He's got a very sparse kick drum pattern, and it really opens up room for the bass to, to create this rhythmic movement. Check out the bass and drums in the chorus. Another thing that's really interesting is there's a slight change in the bass part in the second chorus. He changes the rhythm here. Check this out. Right here. He infuses a more of a reggae rhythm there. I think it's the only time it happens in the song, but it really grabs your ear and makes you wait for it. Arrangementally, another thing the police were masters at are hook lines that happen instrumentally in the track. There's this entire octave part that goes on at the end of the song that's really uh, kind of takes over this part. That's really the, that's the main counter melody for the entire ending of the song. It's really effective. This is one of the most complex pop songs that I've ever heard. I believe if it came out today, it'd still be a massive hit. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel and hit the notification button to let you know when a new video is coming out and when I'm going live. Thanks for watching. Right, right, crazy, right? Rick Beato is crazy good. Police are crazy good too. Um, we'll have another one after this short break. But yeah, just want to highlight again that you know, if it wasn't for guys like Rick Beato, um, I wouldn't be listening to songs like this with that kind of depth. Um, even when I was working with some bigger names in the industry. Um, they kind of taught me too how to listen to make every single thing count and that's just that for the drummers it's also for the notes um, there's a purpose to notes that are out that are in they build they, they either build tension or they bring they bring the song home and it's really amazing and um, the, the next song I'll save it after the break but it's something a little bit more I guess ear friendly and you wouldn't really suspect it to be so in depth with theory. But there's a lot to there's a lot to it.
Anyway, see you guys after the break. This is the music class. Roger Kakapunan. See you guys. Hey guys, you're back with me, uh, Gab Balanka, at um, Raja Katipunan. I'm not at the studio right now, but um, we're still doing this episode. And in this episode, I'm introducing everyone to my good friend. Just kidding. Um, his name is Rick Piato, um, producer, arranger, engineer, music teacher, musician, all around great dude. He has a, a YouTube video uh, series called What Makes a Song Great? And he goes from uh, any and all genres, um, from all the decades of music, to kind of help you listen a little bit deeper, maybe um, make things more interesting, kind of explain the stuff that's going on in the background, um, and kind of dives in, into the uh, musicianship a little deeper. Um, and we're on to the last song that we're going to feature for today, and uh, you won't ever guess it. Because with the way I described it, it sounds like, ooh, he's a, there's, it's going to be like a really deep song or something. No, it's not. It's, the last song is from Blink-182. And um, it's called All the Small Things. And um, I'll probably like leave you guys with this, epi- with this uh, episode of uh, what makes this song great. But I just want to let you know, punk musicians... Are some of the best musicians. That's right. I said it. They're on the same level as anyone else. Um, I would say, not in the same sense, of course. Um, some are more technical, um, like progressive jazz musicians. Those are really technical. But there's something about the intuitiveness that the uh, punk musician plays with, um, with the intent of the song. It's like they already know the end product. And they just make it like a fun ride to get there. And Rick Beato has a great time also um, breaking down and kind of showing us all the nice things, all the small nice things that are happening um, in the song. And that's kind of, I guess that's kind of fortuitous because there's a lot of small elements that really make the song uh, great. And um, it's everything from vocal arrangements um, dissonance in the guitar parts um, and I'll just let you guys enjoy the video and once again this has been Gab Palanka the music class here on Raja Katipunan I'm so sorry I'm out of the studio right now but um, in the future maybe we can have um, a more live discussion together and I will see you next time peace Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, we're starting a new series called What Makes This Song Great? I'm gonna be taking tunes from all different eras and genres and talking about what actually makes them great. Let's get started. Okay, so the song that we're gonna look at today is called All the Small Things by Blink-182. It came out in 1999 on their album entitled Enema of the State. Let's take a look at it. Okay, let's check out the intro of the song. So you already have a couple interesting hooks that happen right off the bat. For example, the beginning of the song when it goes like this. So just that simple GF launches you into the assault of the intro guitar chords. Then you have the muted guitar thing that really kind of comes up a lot of spots in the song. It happens in the verse, but that is really, really catchy. So, right here, this part. Now, another point of interest is this dissonance of this F power chord against the C in the bass. It gives you that that note F, which is a sus4, and it makes it just sound intense there. If I just play the bass and the guitars in the intro, you hear the bass stays on C, while the guitar goes up to the F chord. Then the mutes. That also gives a lot of dynamic range. Then we launch into the verse. Now the verse is just a classic 
one five four five, as is pretty much the entire song. It's all it's only three chords. So the verse starts on the tonic chord. All the small things, true care, true play. Play straight ahead melody. I'll take one lift. Music guitar. You're right. Best trick. Great drum fill. Always, I know. First harmonies appear. At my show, watching. Now we have our little free chorus coming up. The Tom Phil. Okay, so that pre chorus there, what happens in the drums is really great. Quarter note kick. And then into the chorus with a crash. So you've got the held guitar chords. The bass continues on to, to the G right here, G, F, and then boom. Then we're into the chorus. Now, let's just listen to the beginning of the chorus here. Simple, na 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 But there's a little hidden part in here that really grabs your ear, and I'll tell you where it is. There's a little active synthesizer part that's played by Roger Manning, who was the keyboardist in Jellyfish and a session player on this tune. It goes like this. It's like a mini Moog part. The cool thing about this chorus is that there's a hidden dissonance in it, and it happens here on the second chord, the G power chord. Check it out. Right there. It's a simple part. It's just octave C's. It's just going. But one of the things that happens there is it creates a dissonance against the second chord, the G power chord. And you really hear that dissonance if you listen later on in the tune. You hear this dissonance with the lower harmony part. Check it out. Say it ain't so, I will not go. Turn the lights off, carry me home. The B, go, and there's that high C in the synthesizer that's playing that note that creates a flat nine interval. Now your ear doesn't really notice it because it's so low in the mix, but that's what pulls at your heartstrings and makes the tune really have that angst right in that moment. Check it out again. Carry me home. Right here. There's another hook that's introduced there that uses an octave guitar, okay? Which gives you another dissonance once again on the C chord. You have the F, F power chord over the C and it gives you a C sus4 sound. Now we're back into the verse. Pretty standard through the second verse, like the third. We yeah, singing so, I will not go. Turn the lights off, carry me home. Now, right there, say it ain't so, I will not go. Turn the lights off, carry me home. The harmony part there actually completes that line leading into the second chorus. So that lower part just drives you right down the scale into the chorus. Da 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 Per perfect lead in once again. So, I will not go. Turn the lights off. Carry me home. And then... 
So we go through a second chorus, then we hit the bridge. A really cool kind of marching snare feel. And just a simple alternating. And you have that ethereal synth going on there. It gives it a break from there and then the build. And here on the out chorus, we have all things happening at once. We have the nanas, we have the chorus line, and we have the synth line all blending together with that has an intensity without even hearing bass and drums. Say me so, I will not go. Turn the lights off, carry me home. Keep your head still, I'll be your thrill. The night will go on, the night will go on, my little windmill. That is really masterful arranging. Combination of the harmony parts, bringing back the nanas over the hook line, and then those little dissonances that happen that really draw you to this perfect two minute and 48 second pop masterpiece. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel and make sure you hit the notifications button that's ringing the bell to let you know when I'm going live and when a new video is coming out. Thanks for watching.